Hello, welcome to this exam question video. Today we are in the uh, anatomy, physiology or exercise physiology section of this exam paper and we're going to be looking at question 13 which is asking about short term effects of exercise. Now if we quickly jump into the slides, what we know is that we can split responses to exercise or adaptions to exercise into three different categories. We've got the immediate effects which happen in the moment, we've got the short term which happen after in the 24 to 36 to 48 hours following exercise and then we have the longer term response or longer term adaptions where we start to see uh, changes occurring in the body, the bodily system such as improved endurance, muscular hypertrophy and things like that. But for this question we're looking at these four here. Now, the short term effects that we experience in the preceding 24 to 36 hours after the completion of an exercise session. Now that time, that window of time, is very dependent on the intensity of the exercise completed. The longer it takes place for, or the higher intensity that occurs inside of it, obviously the more stress that was placed on the body, therefore the, the damages and the breakdown and the, the response to the body are gonna be you know, equivalent to the degree of the stress which was involved in the training. If it was light, then the responses are gonna be light and short-lived as well. Whereas if the intensity was high, then the short-term responses are gonna be magnified and last a little bit longer as well. So we're looking at these four answers here. There's gonna be an element of fatigue. This could be mental, it could be physiological, but the performer might feel tired for a day or two after completion of exercise. There might be some dizziness. Why? Well, because the body's been damaged and stressed, and the body's trying to rapidly put itself back together, essentially, then a lot of the blood and a lot of the nutrients and a lot of this oxygen-rich blood is being diverted elsewhere around the body and there might be less making it back up to the brain. So because of that, whenever the brain or experiences a lack of oxygen or a lack of blood supply or nutrient supply, then that can lead to or that can cause feelings of dizziness, feelings of brain fog, feelings of unbalance and things like that. We've also got nausea, which could be caused by the digestive system experiencing a level of stress it's not normally used to. So let's say that we do complete a very intense bout of exercise, such as a half or full marathon, for example. In the days following, the body's working really hard to digest the food that it's ingested, and it's trying to break it down, deliver it around the body, and it's trying to sort of fuel the repair of the body, and it might be put out of sorts. And how does the body respond to that? Well, it triggers to the brain that something's up and that might manifest as nausea, sickness, or illness. And then this bottom one here, we've got DOMS, or stands for delayed onset of muscle soreness. So when we do stress a muscle, which it's not normally used to, or we overstress it, which, you know, that's not a bad thing necessarily, because we need to be able to break the muscle tissue down in order for the body to then repair it stronger than it was before also known as muscle hypertrophy. But in doing that, we're likely to actually fill the muscle tissue with additional fluids, with additional nutrients, with additional blood supply, so that it can act with the protein in order to rebuild the muscle stronger. But in doing that, we're gonna cause it to swell. And as that muscle swells, it's going to feel tender. All of the pain receptors nearby are gonna be compressed and activated under this increased level of swelling, and that's going to manifest as pain inside the muscles, they're going to feel stiff, they're going to feel sore, they're going to feel swollen, and we can summarize all of that with this DOMS phrase, delayed onset of muscle soreness. Now, this is going to be experienced primarily in the muscles that are working the hardest, and where the most stress and intensity was being experienced. So, state two short-term effects of exercise, 24 to 36 hours after exercise, for the full two marks here, we could use any of those four that we just discussed. Fatigue, tiredness, aches, pains, nausea, delayed onset muscle soreness, any one of those, and you'd be picking up the mark. This could, however, be asking for the immediate effects or the longer term adaptions, in which case we would just pick one of the other ones here, so the immediate ones being the temperature, the sweating, the minute ventilation, the cardiac output increase, and then the longer term adaptions where we start to see the body comp changing with muscle or fat mass, improved fitness, be it in the cardiovascular, the muscular, the skeletal systems beginning to improve, or perhaps bradycardia, where that cardiac muscle gets stronger, bigger, thicker, more uh, contractile strength involved with it, uh, and that might lead to our resting heart rate dropping below 60 to 50 beats per minute. So that is that. 
That is how you can pick up two easy marks in a question just like that. So I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next video. If you did want to access these slides, then head over to thepetutes.com if you haven't already and you can access these slides and hundreds of more resources just like it. But that's it and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.